comme Charlie Pop. Bizi. Et le mot c'est pas Bluetooth boy. Et une Tesla qui bouli no bini Tesla. Hello guys, welcome to Boxing Blocks and at the home of Nigerian Free Boxing. Please, if you're new to this channel, make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe right now. Yes, like I said before, we are back and we're going to go, we are, we'll continue to draw bangers after bangers. Stay tuned for more because, like I said before, I know you guys have missed have missed uh, my content. You've missed uh, me and our brothers at Diwale, at Jack Bay, you know breaking fights down and reacting to fight it's been i also miss it too i see i i, I read all boxing news and everything sadly i can't react to it because i'm i'm a loser of work at a time so now let's get to what you had to say about um the friends of god uh fury fight and joshua also you know kind of you know lambasted a talk spot for being biased towards them right he said talk sport they call talk sport a uh, talk sport, uh, talk sport uh, um, a platform of hate you know like basically they the, the, some I'm, i know simon simon jordan and those guys you know i don't know what and jim why they always have something the way they address joshua is different from the way they address test fury even if that fury does the most indespicable thing they really tend to try they try they find a way to like say in a nice way i don't know simon jordan reminds me of a 19th century um guy with the mindset of a colonizer you know what i mean like a slave master so that like the way but i mean he's he's very well spoken no doubt about it but the way they are like the way the way he talks with the way he's a little bit he, he talks in a i don't say in a braggadocious manner like um no doubt that the guy is intelligent and everything but i mean it's not I like the guy sometimes, but sometimes like this guy, that bless him, uh, the this one. Like if these guys were around, like these guys are literally <laughs> people you can poop, people that are colonized Nigeria, you know? Like these are one of those guys that are like, this, maybe he talks the same way. I don't know if I'm wrong, but I don't know if that's how I see it. But it just doesn't seem modern to me. Anyways, um, yeah, what do you make of this fire, Joshua uh, uh, White? And the Joshua, of course, addressing the criticism you know and also talking about the Ungano fight and saying that uh, um fury did doc um Usyk. Mm. yeah so i feel like um uh, let me give my my opinion on aj addressing talk spots because i actually started watching talk spots about maybe five months six months ago and i became a fan of their youtube channel I subscribed, I clicked on the bell icon, and I recommend listeners subscribe to the channel Boxing Block Center. This is an opportunity to let you know. Subscribe, click on the bell icon so you can get all new notifications, and we're going to be dropping more content frequently. Now, on Talk Sports, I became more of a fan when I heard them criticizing the heavyweight division. They basically criticized everybody, in my opinion. I wouldn't say they criticized everybody equally. It seems like AJ gets the most stick in talk spots. And to be honest with you, I'm not really upset at them, me personally, because me, myself, I am a critique of AJ. I criticize a lot of things that AJ has done in his career. And right now, um, him addressing talk spots about they did not level the same, le um, the same criticism against Tyson Fury when he went 12 rounds against Otto Wallin. But when he, AJ, went 12 rounds against Frank Martins, he had so much criticism. Well, the truth is, AJ had been on the highest pedestal in British boxing for the longest time. And he, with the biggest crown, had the biggest responsibility. That's how I see it. And for that reason, any hole in AJ's game would be picked up and expanded magnified they would treat it like oh this guy is messing up big time so i feel like that's where that um back-to-back -back criticism from talk spots originated from they they put a big jacket on anthony joshua being the biggest star out of british boxing the one basically um directing british boxing anthony joshua brought so many eyes to the game 
he he brought a lot of prestige, a lot of money to British boxing. And for that reason, I, I mean, he will be the first person to be to be torn down. It's just human nature, right? At the same time, I'll be honest, I like Simon Jordan. I like the way he goes hard. He goes hard at Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, all these promoters. I like Simon Jordan, man. Me, bro, me personally, he, he I like He doesn't go guy. hard at Eddie. But but Frank, Frank Warren, bro, this guy gives Frank Warren a pass. Bro, do you know the... Bro, if we start counting what Frank Warren has said, you know, Frank Warren literally was on the radio talk show yesterday when someone questioned, like, the Fury... Uh, Gano fight, bro. This guy's was this guy was quick to literally rubbish the guy and say, Yeah, like, come on, Frank Warren. Nah, man, that guy's that guy is not. Um, Simon Jordan literally licks Frank Warren's ass, bro. Of course, he he he, he put him in his place <laughs> sometimes, but we all know the re the, the re deal. Like, he doesn't the way he gives the way he tries to question Eddie Hearn. And uh, listen, I know you don't like Eddie Hearn, and I'm myself, I'm not really, I can say I was a real, a real fan, fan of Eddie Hearn. But some of the things I think he did wrong, and um, like like in throwing some people under the bus, stuff like that, which uh, letting letting some other people like get the free pass. Because I look at the our our, our administration, how he threw him under the bus, right? I look at the Conor Ben mm -hmm. uh, Conor Ben administration, how he literally like standing by him in a way. I'm like, okay, is it because Conor Ben make you more money? Is the son of a legend, and you know what I mean? So it's a little bit weird. But yeah. I like Conor Ben, though. I'm not saying I'm no offense or anything. Conor, doesn't Conor Ben have a fight coming up soon? I think. Well, he needs to clear his name um, because due to the, you know, yeah, he's, he's currently under in, under investigation and, and on uh, in, on on the process of clearing his name. You know, that's mm. the that's the that's the latest uh, development. So yeah, continue, bro. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, thanks for that one. Um, as far as the fights, AJ White, in my opinion, this is the fight that AJ needs at this time in his career. I agree with him. He made the right decision going going against Dillian White. It's a big risk because if he can't get past Dillian White, then the Saudi Arabia fight might not happen against Deontay Wilder. And Wilder too, I'm not sure what's happening with Wilder. If he's going to fight Ruiz before that fight, that's also a risk. Um, I don't know why the guys are taking these risks, but I mean, they've made so much money in their careers. It doesn't really matter if they make an extra 50 million. I, I guess they are already good with the amount of money they've made. But the reason why this Dillian White fight is very good for Anthony Joshua is because Dillian White has the capacity to bring out the dog, the anger, the ferocious puncher, the aggressive come forward puncher in Anthony Joshua. Because Dillian and AJ, they're not friends, man. They don't like each other. And I don't like Dillian White, too. In fact, let me go on a little bit of a tangent here. Dillian White is an asshole, bro. That guy, I don't know what's wrong with Dillian, man. That guy just makes me hate him the more at all times. Forget about the fact that he's, he's he sucks as a fighter. This guy has no skills. His legs are slow. His chin is trash. He punches. He, he has bad technique. In his, in throwing his punches, the only good punch he has is the left hook. And he hasn't landed that left hook against anybody in a very long time. Dillian White, they are asking him a question about Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury. Why does Dillian White have to make it a priority to disrespect Francis Ngannou's name? He's like, oh, Ngungu, oh, oh, I can't pronounce these African names, man. I'm not racist. Bro, you sound so dumb. This guy is so dumb, bro. Like, literally, Jillian White's ancestors could have been Unganus. How about that? It's very possible Dillian White, the slave master it, that the, gave Dillian White. The, 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 Dillian White. And, I, White. And Dillian White looks even more like. I don't understand how people that look like that would think who want to put himself in a small bus, right? Like, I just don't understand. I don't understand why. But, anyways, continue, bro. Because you come from this a guy, country. This guy is, well, the regular right. regular legends like Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, they all talked about Africa and uh, where they're from. Like you basically grew up in, I don't know. Like I think it was abducted or so. The guy is literally, he is he's lost. He's I an African. I, lost. This he clown is, lost. is an African, bro. You know what's funny? This is a consistent behavior from Dillian. 
he did the same thing with Martin Bacoli. He was disrespectful against Martin Bacoli's name. Saying, man, you can't even speak English. Bro, knowing how to speak English, is that a badge of honor? But he, said don't speak, retard, he, he himself man. don't speak English. Man, Julian White is a retard, bro. He speaks I hope like, AJ destroys he speaks Jamaican part one most of the time. They were like, he's not really... That's like, why he speaks. Yeah, he speaks part, this, Jamaican honestly, part one. Honestly, Julian White to me, he's just despicable. There is nothing about that guy that I can like. In his interviews, he sounds funny sometimes. You know, he, he knows how to make those banters. He, he's, he, he has some wit with him. But he's a daft guy. And I hope AJ destroys him. Most importantly, this fight is good for AJ because it has the capacity to bring out the dog, you know, the ferociousness in AJ. And if that can happen, man, going forward, AJ might be a different fighter, at least for the rest of the, until his career ends. Because to be honest, his last five fights, he hasn't been looking good. He's been fighting scared, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it needs to change. Like, I know it needs to box, like keep develop, develop, developing himself as a boxer but i think he needs to like add something to it like bring back that ferocious ferociousness that he that he that he had i think i think yeah. he needs to do that bro you know it's facts yeah aj aj seems to be scared to take a punch that look that seems to me that looks like the biggest problem in this in this fight game these days he's think, afraid of you, taking a punch do you think he can he, like do you, what do you think he's afraid of getting is it because he's not he doesn't trust his chin or what or doesn't want to be hold and wave and wobbly like um a lot of boxers are like when they go hold apart from mayweather mayweather still look fresh for his age everybody want to be like mm -hmm. mayweather like i mean mayweather is just a one i think one in a generation right because for him to have avoided let's say evaded uh you know punishment like uh, of course he took punishment in the fire but like like he like the main punishment you take he didn't maybe because i don't know bro no, bro, Mayweather, Mayweather used money to repair his face and his hands. Mayweather took a lot of damage in his career, bro. <laughs> there, yeah, was a, but, there was a fight in which but, Mayweather's uh, teeth but, was literally uh, punched but, out. But Ali had, had money as well, but, but you know, but he was wobbly. Yeah. He, he, uh, he, he came, and of course, Ali had, were, was in, Ali was in more tough fight than Mayweather, if it, if it, because everywhere in the story. Oh, he, yeah, absolutely. If, he fought people twice the size. I mean, but George, from my, my opinion, Ali would be a super, a super middleweight usually in this mm. day, in this, in, in, the, in this day of, of everweight, right? Of course, I know Usyk is there, yeah. but Usyk is not really like Usyk is relies on his technique. You know, if Usyk fought like a warrior, that's why Usyk is not a big draw. He has, he has all these titles, but it's not a big draw, bro. He cannot sell out a stadium or anything. Like apart from Ukraine, he mm -hmm. cannot really do anything. He's not a big name. He's not even Klitschko. The Klitschko's brother. The reason being that he's not. If you go to walk, watch Usyk fight, you know he's boxing. You don't expect knockout. You don't. You know. You don't get it. You know. Again, like you get it against like Tony Bellis of the world, but I, I'm talking about against the big boys. Like Usyk couldn't even knock. He couldn't knock out Charles Woodersport. You know. So you have to. Yeah, understand. man. I honestly. Osik is not an exciting fighter. If I'm being honest with myself, he's not. I, I look at Evander his, Holyfield. His style is very you know, good. It's just that he doesn't have the the punching power. And, and I also feel enough. like that style, Osik's style, cannot survive. If if he fights back to back top heavyweights, he's gonna lose. He will lose because he's only fought two people, bro. He's only fought AJ and Chisora. That's it. He's not fought anybody else in heavyweight. If but if Usyk can go through good, Tyson he's good, Fury, he's good, Deontay he's Wilder, he's, he's gonna lose, bro. It will take an L because he's a small guy in the heavyweight division, and he doesn't carry too much power. How much how much damage can you do to people if you don't carry too much power in the heavyweight division? Power is the main thing in the division, bro. So um, I feel like Usyk is a very excellent fighter, Hall of Famer, but. He's not that exciting, in my opinion. And I feel like if he can fight five guys, the Zhang Zelangs, Zhang, the Chinese guy, fight Joe Joyce, fight Deontay Wilder, fight Tyson Fury, he will take a, an L in one of those fights. He can't defeat all those people. I don't think he can do that. Um, but yeah, man, Dillian White, AJ, it's an okay fight. They are smart enough to put it in the stadium. 
I mean, in, in the O2 arena and not in the stadium. Um, Jillian White, after he takes an L, I believe AJ beats him. But who knows? Anything can happen. But after he takes an L against AJ, that's it. That's it. No more big money fights for Jillian. He's going to go. He will probably just retire. That would just be the best bet. And if AJ loses to Jillian, same thing. He would have to retire. Well, but AJ might still have one or two more decent fights that he can make if he loses to White. I want Joshua to win, but not because like I I I want her to win for sure. Because I feel like Dylan White really I don't I don't see Dylan White becoming a a top dog. I still see AJ being a top dog division. He just needs to get some things together. Dylan White literally lost motivation. He, the, his last fight he came very heavy, like he looks sloppy. He's not sharp anymore, bro. Maybe because maybe he's off the juice and you know he's off the juice now. But we still don't know what happened to the B sample, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We well, still don't know to this day. <laughs> Everything got swept. We don't know what happened to the B sample because, to this day. B- b- because prior to that, you see this guy was in top shape and he was sharp. And after that, he became bluffy and like a balloon. And then he doesn't, he, he throw, he, you can even see his left hook coming now. So yeah. it's one of those things. Guys, big up to each and every one of you for supporting the channel. We'll be right back very soon. Stay tuned. God bless you, bro. And uh, we'll get in touch later, right? Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Cheers.